Now for part 3. I was surprised by a visit from one of my wayward wife's girlfriends. She is about the same age as Jane. Her name is Carol and was with my wayward wife last week on the girl's night. In fact, the girl's night was at Carol's house. If you read my comments, you would know that last week Jane came home very intoxicated. She used a ride share. Carol is an old friend of my wayward wife. I guess being married for over two decades, wayward wife has forgotten. I introduced her to Carol. Carol's parents were friends of my parents. Well, I guess my unpredictability has contributed to wayward wife to being unstable. And last week's girl's night, Jane reached a breaking point. She got so intoxicated she confided in Carol about her affair. Apparently, she just kept talking, even after Carol told her to stop. Carol got so angry at her. As Carol kept condemning Jane, Jane just kept trying to defend her actions while continuing to lay out an endless stream of details. The next day, Carol reached out to Jane. Jane apparently did not remember anything from the night before. Carol summarized Jane's confession. Well, Jane completely denied that she is having an affair, that she did not say those things, and that Carol is mistaken. Carol told Jane she is full of shit and has a week to come clean or she will tell me herself. And since Jane continues to deny that she said anything, I got my visit with Carol. So over coffee, I got the abbreviated accounting of Jane's confession. Carol was expecting me to be devastated. I surprised her when I told her I already knew. I asked her who else was around when Jane did this confession. Carol was the only one else in the house. I asked Carol who else she is told. That offended her. She told me that she would not spread something like that before telling me. I apologized. I explained to her that I had my own timeline for wanting to deal with Jane, and adding others would complicate my plans, and I had to ask. Carol was understanding. I asked her as a favor to me, not to mention it to anyone and allowed Jane to think she believe her. Carol agreed with my first request, but said the second part doesn't feel right. I asked her to try. I told her I would be okay. Carol said that anything else I need, all I have to do is ask. I know that I will have to make another apology when Carol finds out about my health. But I will deal with that another day. So I'm going to confront Jane tomorrow. We have a regular date night, and I plan on calmly telling her what I know. My condition, and how I'm going to spend the rest of my life without her. I hope the public setting will keep the drama to a minimum. I will update some time this weekend. My plan is after the confrontation. To give her what I know, asking her to not contact me or my family. We will see how it goes. Now for the top comments. Just be prepared for your soon-to-be ex-wife to do the following. 1. Deny the affair until the evidence is presented by you. 2. Start crying and apologizing. 3. Begging for another chance, saying the AP meant nothing and that you are the love of her life, total BS. 4. Saying that she'll end the affair and do everything possible to make it up to you. Once again, total BS. That sobbing and sorrow routine turning to complete anger and threats after she finds out she'll be lucky to walk away with a bag of flour from the pantry. Just be prepared. Great advice. However, OP is way beyond any manipulation. This man is a rock, and I truly never seen someone handle this much so well. Once again, you are an inspiration, my anonymous friend. I've been following this very closely. I went through my second divorce last year. Both my ex-wives cheated on me, so I know that pain all too well. Although I don't have the terminal diagnosis you do, I watched my best friend die from terminal diagnosis just before divorce. So I have some limited idea. You're handling this far better than nearly anybody in your situation would. And once again, I applaud you. One comment on this post to consider. Please give Carol a heads up that you're confronting Jane. It's highly likely that despite what you tell her, she's going to blame Carol. Just help Carol be ready for that next conversation with Jane. Two more things. One, please DM me if you want to talk. Two, as part of your Reddit legacy, would you consider writing us a post both here and on your profile page? That passes on how you grew into the person that was able to handle this with such grace and peace and wisdom. I will think about the post about how I grew into who I am. The short answers. I made all of the mistakes. I just learned to look at myself from the view of others, and that taught me so much of who I was at the time and who I wanted to be. Props to Carol. Some girlfriends would take that secret to the grave instead of telling the betrayed spouse. Thank you, OP. Seriously, your composure is uncanny and amazing. I'm glad your family is giving you the support you deserve. 
All I'm gonna say to your ex is karma is a real bitch. Now for the update. Mike Tyson said, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. Yes. Every plan does not go exactly as you vision. Mine is not exempt from this reality. I will take a moment to set the table of my plan for you. Jane and I have a weekly date night and we generally use the same restaurant. So much so, we have a regular table. It is in the back. Still public, but away from the high energy near the bar. I decided that this would be the place I confront her. I plan to do it after the end of dessert. I got my lawyer and his wife's reservations at the same time. I gave our server the payment for both of our party's meals before we began. She has been our server for years. I had Carol on call to help Jane after I leave. My plan was to end the meal with a conversation about our relationship. I wanted to record it. Then I would confront her, tell her about how I know, my diagnosis, and the plan for what I want. And give her a letter asking her to not contact me or my family or come to the farm. I would have the letter witnessed. I would also leave her a briefcase full of evidence along with the divorce papers. Then get up and walk away. I expected her not to make a scene to protect her social status. I did record the conversation. She gushed about how great our relationship has been over the years. She talked about how great we are as a team. I asked her if I treat her right. Have ever abused her, etc. She said, of course not. Then I asked her, why did she cheat on me? She stated that she does not know what Carol told me, but that she is wrong. I told her I had already known before Carol told me. At that point, everything I think Jane had prepared to counter this conversation left. And so did the color on her face. All she could do is ask, what? I then told her to let me get through this without interruption, and she shook her head in agreement. She went from a confident and prideful woman to a woman with the deer in the headlights look. All she could do is nod. I then explained how I came home after my meeting with my doctor. I was rushing home to have the most difficult conversation with the one person I wanted to talk to. I explained that when I drove up, I saw his car I then checked the cameras and saw they were in privacy mode. I decided then to go to the farm. I told her that I still had footage and she almost interrupted to ask how, but I just put up my hand to remind her to let me finish. I told her about my diagnosis and plans not to fight the disease. I saw the heartbreak in her eyes, and I got angry. How can she feel sorrow for me? But I moved forward. I then signaled the waitress and she went over and got my lawyer. They both came to our table. My lawyer handed me a briefcase and a folder with a letter. I told her that I don't want her to contact me or my family or come to the farm after I left tonight. I signed the letter and asked the server to witness it. The server and lawyer then watched me give the letter to Jane. I then dismissed them. I then concluded by giving the briefcase to Jane. I told her I know much more than she expects. I was totally destroyed. That there are divorce papers and they're already signed by me, and she can sign them and start the divorce proceedings. I told her I don't expect to survive a contested divorce. That as long as I am alive, she can stay at the home in town. I will be at the farm. I will not see her after tonight. I don't want to hear any excuses. I have called Carol to help her home. In true fashion, Jane kept her composure in public. She just uttered a quick but. I just reminded her I'm leaving and I am done. I went to the server and gave her a generous tip, found the owner, and apologized for not giving him a heads up. As I am leaving, I see my son at the door with Carol. Carol passes me with a quick smile, then a concern in her eyes for Jane, my son grabs my truck and his wife drives me to the farm. My son and his wife stayed with me Friday night. I finally got them to go home at midnight. I went to sleep with a great sense of relief, but with a renewed feeling of loss. But I was able to accomplish the task I needed to do. The family came to the farm on Saturday to make sure I was okay. I felt a bit coddled, but it was a good day until Carol came by in the afternoon. She said that Jane fell apart Friday night, but I guess contacted her AP on Saturday. After the conversation, Jane realized she was just being used by the AP and was really in a bad state. Carol made sure to tell me that Jane did not ask her to reach out to me. But she feels that if I could talk with Jane for a bit, then it could give Jane the strength to keep her out of my life. Carol knows how to frame her requests. I reluctantly agreed to a two-hour discussion at the farm with Jane. I would have someone there for me and Jane could choose someone to be there for her. We will have a civil conversation. I will not accept being blamed, minimization, or blame shifting. The purpose of the meeting will be for her to get an answer for how to move forward. That meeting happened this morning. Jane picked Carol. I don't know why, it may be damage control. I chose my daughter. 
I wanted it to be as comfortable for Jane just so we don't have to repeat this again. I entered the meeting with a steadfast direction and goal of having Jane out of my life. The meeting was as expected. Jane cried, apologized, and tried to minimize the affair. I was not having any of it. I laid out that she will have a place to live until my death. Then the house decision will be on the trustees. I explain that she will not see anything from my estate or from the trust. But she has her six-figure pension and her trust, so she will be just fine. I have to rant about something. She said, why won't you fight for me or us? I almost broke loose my temper at her. I took a deep breath and stayed calm, responded by saying, I just don't care about you or us anymore. That kind of destroyed her. Here I'm going to express my anger. This is the mind of a selfish cheater. All they think about is themselves that even after destroying someone they to have enough value in that person's eyes to fight for. F that. I was not worth fighting for against her desires or greed. Sorry for the rant. Jane gets the answers she asked for, but in hindsight did not want them. I don't want another meeting. I feel continuing the meetings just distracts me from what I want to do. Carol and Jane leave, but Carol comes back. A couple of hours later. She and I have a quick talk. Apparently, AP had received notice from the trustees that they are going to convert the loan into shares of his company. And since the trust will be the majority owner, they are asking for a full forensic audit. My daughter with the MBA is not wasting any time. Well, I guess when Jane went to him for comfort, she realized what I already expected. He was using her to see if she could buy the loan from me. There were offhanded comments in the recordings that I suspected he was up to something. Well, with the paperwork filed, AP knowing I sold the loan to the trust, and Jane no longer in my life. Her usefulness to him is gone, and he let her know. Apparently, Jane also confided in Carol that her trust is exhausted. She will only have the income from her pension. She saw life with AP to be more glamorous than with me. She truly thinks his net worth is more than mine. He drives nice cars, eats in fancy restaurants, flies in first class, while my husband played on his farm, drove an old truck, and we flew in economy class. That she was planning on divorcing me when he expressed his undying love and desire to marry her. It disgusts me that she is this greedy and shallow. I won't see it, but I expect my family will tell her how much I was worth after my death. I'm so glad that her true colors were shown now so I could deal with her and spare my family from her. Then Carol did something that was totally unexpected and threw me off guard. She told me that since I am no longer encumbered if I need companionship to give her a call, I challenged her and asked why with my diagnosis, why would you or any woman want to spend time with me? There is nothing long term. She responded that just because Jane is an ignorant slut and did not know what she had, does not mean any divorcee or widow would not line up to spend what time I have left with me, that I'm a hell of a man and any time with me would be cherished. And I would have quite a few lady callers lining up, and she might as well be first in line. I asked her, but most won't know Jane and I are separated. She said Jane does not want the social groups to know, but that she and Sarah will make sure her story is out. I was polite and told her I would let her know. She smiled and gave me a kiss on the cheek. I thought about it after she left, but I am pretty sure I do not want that complication in my life right now. I have left quite a bit out, but that is the highlight. I'm doing okay. It has been a roller coaster. I need a few days of peace and quiet. The social groups will know soon. Both the breakup of my marriage and also my diagnosis. I will now have an endless stream of people wishing me well. I knew I could not delay it forever. I don't want to be treated differently. However, life is what it is. Time to start dinner and relax this evening. Again, thank you all for all of your support. I will try to go back and respond to all of your messages. They mean so much to me. Now for the top comments. I was waiting for this update all day. I'm so invested that I feel such a relief when you confronted Jane. My blood boiled when she asked why you won't fight for her in the relationship. Psycho after everything she did. I'm glad that the AP played her and that everyone in the family knows. FYI, your daughter is the MVP for doing what she's doing. LOL, I also love that she wasted her trust. What a dummy. Carol is a mess. I mean, she's not wrong. You sound like one hell of a guy, but damn, Carol. Give OP a day at least. Also, I love that she will let the social group know. I don't know if you will continue to update. I hope you do. But if you don't, I hope that the rest of your days are filled with peace and the love of your family. Thanks for the support. I have to admit, Carol took me by surprise. 
She said she wanted to be first in line. I guess she believes that fortune favors the bold. I am sure there will be more drama that I need to vent and gain support for. Thanks. It sucks even worse after seeing that she only saw you as a dollar sign when after reading all your post. We can all see that you bring so much to the table. I hope you take Carol up on our offer and experience true companionship in the rest of these days. You deserve some peace of mind. The show is ending with Jane, and I'm happy to see she's gotten everything she deserved. Still hoping the tide changes for your health. Thank you for keeping us updated with this journey. Hell of a ride. I think Carol has admired you from afar and to her credit, respected you and your marriage. She just has feelings for you and would not consider it a burden to be with you. I am my wife's caretaker. We will be married 38 years this May. She has multiple sclerosis. I have never felt it was a burden to care for her because I do care for her. You must be a hell of a guy to be so well thought of. I'm sure everyone who loves has been enriched by your legacy. Keep us updated. You are one hell of a guy. My thoughts are with you and your wife. I think I would rather have my shortened time than your wife's road.